Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cape Rugby TV here on Cape Town TV, live at nine Wednesdays. And, of course, bringing you the very best of rugby. And, of course, I think we are on our, probably the biggest rugby show in the country. Certainly the biggest English-speaking rugby show in the Western Cape. Uh, the, uh, by 25 times. I just have to always remind people that. You know, we bring rugby to life in Western Province like it's never been brought to life before. We have to remind the planet. Right. So, um, of course, my distinguished guest, I nearly said extinguished guest. My yes, no, Sam, it always been here. I'm an Abrams, Deputy CEO of Western Province on the stage. Good evening, Dave. Nice to have you here. Yeah, it's great to be here. Always great to be here. Uh, knowing that there's thousands of people out there listening to hundreds of thousands and watching what you are saying. I know, I know. It's actually fantastic. And Paulie, we missed you a little bit last week. We, of course, had the award ceremony. Nice to have you back. Um, I see Carlos. Uh, Carlos is, is, is back. Yo, James, thanks for having me back. I thought I'd been fired. No, um, no. And yo, because Egan's missing tonight, I decided to bring my friend. Yes. <laughs> so Carlos has made an appearance. Yeah, no, um, I would never dare uh, um, uh, fire an, uh, an, uh, anyone who looks like an assassin. But, uh, but let, let's quickly ask you about that because I think a lot of people maybe don't know. It's, it's probably November, right? November, I, I pray it's November. It's, it's, uh, it's November. I, I wish it was just me. This is just my look. And but it's November and I need a head start because this is, this is about two weeks. <laughs> Not even <So>. November. <laughs> no, I, mean, I looked like a, like a rot when I tried mine for the first time and after that I decided, even though it is for a really good cause. Of course, mm. it's, to, um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a worldwide uh, campaign yeah. for people to grow men. I suppose well, men to grow moustache. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> and it's to raise awareness for uh, prostate cancer. Yes, yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think that's it. I mean, I remember we started, uh, the, the Bowls for Good Foundation made a big thing about it a couple of years yeah. ago. So we started doing it then. Yeah, there were quite a few, few people that jumped yeah. on. I remember I jumped on it and those photographs <laughs> are obviously still haunting me now for the rest of my life. And some people are still publishing those photographs on funny blogs and, and, and things like that and saying like, is this the guy who presents Cape <laughs> Rugby? Look at him. But anyway, so yeah, uh, congr well, good luck with that. Thanks. You know, of course, you get different types of Movembers as well. You get mm. handlebars and walrus. And uh, Mr. H, you also <laughs> got a Movember. <laughs> you, you've had Movember all year. Yeah, I know. It's been <laughs> here for, I nearly said 70 years. But of course, yeah. Peter de Villiers would be our poster child for Movember, yeah. Folks, it was a fantastic evening last week. It was the Western Province Rugby uh, Awards Dinner, VHL Awards Dinner. And uh, everybody was celebrated at the dinner, and we were very excited to show you what we could do at Cape Rugby TV. We were able to bring you live broadcasts. We've done two this year so far, as we showcased the amazing ability of Cape Town TV. We did the live game from NNK and Hands and Hearts. That was at the Jan Berger Sports Complex. And then we rounded it off this year with the uh, broadcast live last week from Kelvin Grove, and we uh, absolutely had an amazing time. Some of you might have missed it, but let's run you through some of the highlights of last week. It was great. Check it out. Many dignitaries arrived on the night. Uh, of course, it was celebration time, and we managed to interview quite a few celebrities. Herman Abrams guided the procedures on the evening as he was the master of ceremonies, looking splendid in his uh, penguin suit. And of course, Mr. Toby Titus, the president of Western Province Rugby, was there to uh, bring way to it. Scott Berger and Jean de Jong, the supremos in the Springbok rugby side representing Western Province, was on hand as part of the Cape Rugby uh, interview panel and how fantastic it was to have Jean de Villiers, one of the world's greatest centers and one of Cape Town TV's all-time favorites, Gio Aplon. Gio Aplon joined us together with Jean de Villiers for some great interviews. And of course, it was time for the Club Rugby Division Awards. Many of the divisions, prizes being handed out on the night, more than 60 trophies. We managed to speak to guys from uh, DHL, Charles Brewer and Selwyn Lewis, of course, from Club Newlands, also uh, representing. And Don Armand from UCT, the captain of UCT, 
And don't forget the Deputy President of Western Province Rugby Football Union, fellow Wakefield, on hand yet again, showing his presence and showing just how special it was. And our highlight of the season must have been that interview with Chippy Solomons, and we had him back on the night. It was a great evening. Brian Abana. Many people have been dying to see Brian Abana, and there he was on screen with us together with Chippy Solomons. And don't forget the guys from Violets as they helped us round off the evening. It was a fantastic evening, Mr. H. A great awards night. Yeah, I think it's always fantastic to see all the role players under one roof. Yeah. If you should take that building away, there would be no rugby left in Cape Town. Absolutely. Because all the role players were there. And it's, it's always great, you know, to see the players there and the officials, the sponsors, and everything. And I wish that we could, you know, sort of perhaps go to a much bigger place because we are inundated with uh, you imagine what, you had something like 350 guests? 350. And you handed over more than 60 trophies? That's right. And some of those trophies, of course, went to uh, some of the senior players as well, who we don't often get to see. Let's yeah. take a look at some of the photographs of the night, and you'll see some of those trophies, which maybe you didn't get to see up close. There you have it. Those are just the shields and some of the division trophies. What a fantastic uh, occasion that was. Some of the players there. Then Devald Divenacher, of course, was uh, the player of the year, as far as I know. And let's have a look quickly at some of the other photographs. Marty's women's winner of their division there. And uh, the guys from Tigerberg. There's Tolly Wisthuizen and BJ van Ster. Tigerberg winning uh, the Super League B. Yes, and going up. More of the Western Province rugby players as they were up in the mix. Nick Costa, Katra Kielis, Devald Divenacher, Sio Kalisi and JJ Engelbrecht all representing the players in one group posing for their pictures towards the end of the evening all looking absolutely splendid in their blue blazers and one of the favorites on the night was of course that newcomer Sia Khaleesi who has made such an impact at Western Province. Nick Costa on hand he's made a great comeback after that injury and uh, looking splendid as well. Of course uh, many more club players uh, handed out uh, trophies there and Katrakilis together with the guys from De Burger, uh, Rian Gerber, who you would quite often have seen on the field at Newlands during halftime with that kicking competition. But Katrakilis was, of course, the club player of the year. JJ Engelbrecht, of course, getting his prize and uh, some more trophies going out to the guys from the clubs. And this was our all-time favorite pick of the night. Now, if you haven't guessed who that is, well, why don't you let me know on Facebook right now? I'd like to know from you. Uh, if you can tell me who was that in picture. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to tell you who it is. On Facebook right now, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. It's as easy as that. Just join us and uh, see if you can uh, identify that player. I think we'll quickly go back to that slide in a second and we'll give you one more shot and see how many of you on Facebook are able to identify <laughs> Dijk Karl Kopp. <laughs> but uh, uh, a legend in making. There it is. Once again, tell us. Who is that funny man over there? Before that, of course, uh, he didn't have a, always have a, a Karl Kopp. And for those of you that don't know, he did play, I think, for the South African under-21 or under-19 soccer team. So multi-talented. Now, Mr. H and I took a little walk around Newlands um, the other day. Um, so many people, especially folks watching Cape Town TV, have not necessarily been to Newlands yet. But Newlands, Mr. H, when Newlands is full, it's obviously spectacular. But when it's empty, it's, it's got a funny feeling about it. Eh? A haunting feeling. Yeah, yeah. Paulie, huh? when, it's, when, when you guys are playing at Newlands and you're playing on the, on the pitch, um, what's it like pl practicing, like a captain's practice, when there's nobody in the stadium? Yeah, Josh, I think Mr. Mr. H said it, it did have that, 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 ki that kind of haunting feel. It was very strange. Um, would much rather be playing on a Saturday in, the, in a full stadium than training there by yourselves <laughs> oh, on the Friday before the game. Well, of course, things have changed at Newlands. It is the end of the season. And what we didn't know, folks, is that Western Province have always got a few tricks up their sleeves. Now, what we wanted to show you was just how easy it is for you to use your phone and take a couple of videos and just have a little bit of fun. So Mr. H and myself went out field side to check out Newlands and the glowing grass of Newlands. Have a look at this. <laughs> uh, 
Hello everybody, welcome to the Newlands Strawberry Travelling Experience. With me, Herman Abrams, the Deputy CEO of Western Rams Rugby Football Union. Mr H, is this what it's come down to now? Uh, the Western Rams Rugby Football Union is um, in the off-season planting strawberries at Newlands? Yes, JP, you know diversity is the buzzword these days. So when there's no rugby, we turn it into a strawberry field. And we hope that we will have a great harvest by the end of February. Uh, we will employ uh, club players to come and assist us. They'll get paid a bucket of strawberries every day. <laughs> and at the end of, you know, after the harvest is taken to the market, the money will be split. And uh, some of the clubs, will, but the clubs won't get money. They'll each get two strawberries. So they, yeah, that's the so part of the team. Probably going to start a song about this as well, the strawberry fields of Newlands. Yeah, but don't sing it now. Okay. It's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. The hallowed ground of Newlands, or whether there's strawberries there or um, Super 15 or Springbok players on the park, always special. And wow, Newlands, when there's nobody here, the vibe is just weird. Anyway, we'll see you guys on the show a little bit later. Cheers, bye. Okay, Mr. H, I mean, obviously, we were just having a bit of fun there. Um, I mean, it was so easy to do as well. We were just, all we had to do was uh, take the camera and we were fiddling around, folks, and that's how easy it is. But, it, I mean, I, we were, I was quite surprised to see all this tinfoil. <laughs> okay, folks, the, the club rugby spillers are beta. You're not really going to be picking strawberries at Newlands, okay? But, Mr. H, tell, tell us a little bit more. Why is there this plastic lining over the field at, at Newlands? Every five years the whole field gets fumigated. Fumigated? Yeah. And the plastic is there to, to pre prevent the gases from escaping. Okay. So they put on there. And uh, it is done to rid the, the field of all pests and all funguses and all foreign grass seeds. And they put in there 600 kilograms of grass seed. Of seed? Yeah. And after that, for, for the next year, another 400. So 1,000 kilograms of grass seed go onto Newlands Field. Incredible. A, and, a ton uh, of seed. Yeah. And uh, that plastic stays there for 48 hours. Okay. And then they remove it. And uh, every second year, yeah. the grass is uh, redone, you know, to Where just to clean it off. They strip all the grass yeah. off and they realize. But a lot of people don't realize, of course, that that's one of the few fields, I think, in Africa that has got plastic. Yeah, deso. Yes, which is stabilizer. it's stitched into the ground. That's right. To improve the irrigation. And that little that little operation costs a half a million rand. Yes. Okay. So you can see, you know, it's, it's that's just. Uh, there's a lot of work. And that's what that, that's a, what it means to to maintain a rugby field. Polly, what what is it? What, what, when you're playing rugby, how much of a difference does a, does a good field make? Oh, it just makes, it makes a hell of a difference. I mean, people t just going to soccer, people are always talking about the English Premier League. Yeah. If, uh, if our PSL guys could play on fields like that, yeah. the guys would look unbelievable. Um, so it makes a hell of a difference. And when you're playing rugby, does it make a, a difference for you as a, as a player, especially in, in the seven space? Um, long grass, short grass, hard field? Yeah, it does. Um, you know, you can like it. Hong Kong's very much like, like Newlands. Uh, the ground's a little bit soft, the grass is a bit, a bit longer, so the field's heavier. Whereas, whereas a place like Adelaide, you're playing on a cricket pitch, so you feel faster, yeah. but you also don't want to get tackled there. <laughs> so it's a little bit difficult to catch 22. You know, when the field's heavy, the legs are heavy, and when it's fast, you feel faster, but the roasties are much nicer as well. But of course, some coaches will, will say to the greenskeepers, don't, don't cut the grass because we're playing against a really fast team. Bullant. Borland a fast team? Or no, Borland don't cut their grass. They ever. don't cut their grass. Like the last 17 years, I don't <laughs> yes. think they've cut the grass there. Well, I remember. They don't cut the grass. All the guys come from the north. Yes. They use the hard yeah. field, so some of them don't cut the grass. I often look at that TV footage and I see the grass is brown. <laughs> yeah, You're going yeah. up to Kimberley, yeah. Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, Mr. H. Um, uh, there's quite a lot of activity coming up now at Newlands, um, and I think we can quickly take a look at some of that activity. Newlands isn't going to be dead until the next Curry Cup. There's, there's quite a lot of stuff coming up. Let's take a look at that then, folks. It's the Tri-Series. 
um, between the Stormers and the Lions. That's on the 27th of January. Then on the 31st of January, the Sharks against the Lions, and it's uh, the uh, Stormers against the Sharks. After that, even more fixtures, the Southern Kings against the Stormers, and then begins the start of the Super 15, uh, the Stormers against the Hurricanes, and uh, the, of course then the Stormers and the Sharks, the Stormers and the Blues, the Lions and the Stormers, Stormers and the Bulls. Those are just the beginning of the fixtures. Uh, Mr. H, quite a lot of, um, quite a lot uh, of fi fixtures there. Yeah, if you just look at the, the starting, the first game, 27th of January, you know, that's a month after Christmas or Boxing Day. Yeah. So and that's why the field is being done right now, because within two months it must be... It's got to be ready. Ready, go here. You know, so. And I remember it wasn't so long ago that there was that problem with the field about yeah. seven or eight years ago. Yeah. That, the, that, that you, you used to run up every halftime and press yeah. down all the parts. Yes, yes, that's right. People used to run on the field and push it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right, we've got a couple more. Uh, um, um, let's just quickly t uh, touch base on that then, uh, Mr. H, this, uh, the Tri-Series yeah, at Newlands. Um, of course, it's a combination of, of teams that are playing yeah, there. the Sharks and the Lions will join us this year. Yeah. And uh, it's quite interesting, you know, early season, see what, and the combinations. And it's good for the teams, for their preparation for the Super 50. Yeah, yeah. Because otherwise they wouldn't have that kind of, Warm-up uh, matches. Warm-up matches, you know. And it's important to play those. Uh, how important are those warm-up and friendlies, uh, Pauli, before you go into a test match? Uh, I mean, you've played a few test matches in your you time. No, very, very, very important. Um, I think the guys, you know, it's, it's, uh, they do a hell of a lot of work in the off-season, working on their structures, putting their systems in, into place. And the only way you're going to see it, uh, you know, whether it's going to work or not, is if you play. So yeah. it's very important to actually have a few warm-up games behind your back before you go into the super rugby seasons. We all know how difficult that is. It's a long season. It's very, very trying. But what does it do for you in, in terms of the warm-up match? What, what does it do for you mentally, physically? Oh, lots, Jeff. So it builds your, builds your confidence in yourself and your teammates and also your, also your game plan yeah. that you guys are going into the season with. Because it's, it's very difficult going, in, going into a tournament without trying your, your game plan. It needs to be tried and tested, and the players actually need to have faith in it to mm. actually go and execute it. I mean, you've played scrum off for the South African 21s and the 19s. I mean, the, obviously scrum off is... Is it in a game like that that you start finding where your fly-off is? Yes, very much so. You know, I think it's still, it's still a little bit difficult for the guys because the coaches are still trying certain players out in certain positions. So yeah. it is difficult to get your combinations going. But again, like you, like you said, that's where you, <laughs> that's where you actually start learning. I can't, I can't, sorry, I can't stop laughing at you with that moustache. <laughs> I'm just thinking, <laughs> how am I going to get through the show here? Jackie, I mean, on. really, okay. I mean, if I was a scrum off and I looked come and sit up over there with and you. there I saw, um, what was that Australian cricket player's name <laughs> with a big moustache? Oh, uh, Anybody on Facebook out there can tell us? Um, the Murph, Hughes. Murph Hughes. Murph Hughes. Yeah, Murph Hughes. Yeah, Imagine as a scrum off looking up and seeing Murph Hughes standing there and you had to find <laughs> both of you with your snorter. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you say it's, uh, uh, that's where, where you start finding your combinations. Eh? Yeah, definitely. Uh, oh, right. and, uh, it is important. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the other fixtures that are also happening at Newlands. Quite a lot more events there. Um, it, it, it certainly does look like it is a long season and now you can see why it is that rugby is a 12 month season. Um, of course, uh, Mr. H, tomorrow it's the referees awards function. Then we start the National Sevens. The annual general meeting for the Western Province Rugby Football Union is coming up now in the next month. The Executive Planning Conference and the HSBC as a World Series. Let's take a look at that then one, one at a time. Tomorrow is the referees awards function. That's right. Uh, this yeah, is you know, the referees give out a lot of uh, awards. I think more than, uh, than we give out at our awards uh, yes. event. Uh, but it's good for them, you know, to recognize the referees, especially the beginners and those that are long-serving guys, uh, the Joey Salmons. Well, we had uh, Joey on the show, and yeah. it was nice. And you could see that he actually then... Yeah, it was yeah. nice that we, in, uh, yeah, we, we, I think we shot him last week, uh, getting his award. Yeah. So he was awarded what the referee of the year. He was the referee of the year. And the newcomer referee was, I think, Stefan de Tui. Yeah. You've had some interesting refs as well this year. Louis Kuhn getting into the picture. Yeah, Louis Kuhn is first, first yeah. uh, referee, and I think he must be the first of our current or local Springboks that really yeah. took up and yeah. joined the referee society. I mean, you find others take a whistle and referee a game, but they don't yeah. join the society. They enjoy the society, yeah. yeah. He did that. 
quite a lot of fixtures still coming up, um, or at least, uh, should we say, administrative events and sevens fixtures. We're going to take a look at those in a minute. Let's take an ad break. We'll be back with you in a sec. Mr. H, there really is a lot of administrative stuff that has to be wrapped up towards the end of the year, huh? Yes, you know, it's planning, it's uh, reports that must be written. The union brings out its annual report, and it covers all the aspects of the union. Mm. And you would like to, you know, uh, I was very chuffed today when I started doing my things, and I looked at the goals that we set ourselves yeah. last year, this time, yes. which we will do now again for next year. And... You, we reached all our goals. We, oh, we, but surely we overshot the goals. Yeah, no, no, this there year. are certain... You know, it was like, fantastic. Like the, the media part and the, yeah. and the building out of the, of, the, of, of the game, that is way beyond our expectations as part of the show. Yeah. You know, and the other things where we build uh, or, or increase the under-20 signs, you, yeah. know, you, you know, by 31... In, uh, 31 new under 20 sides. Yeah, you don't find those things anywhere else in the country. It's only here. So it, that's, it's that, is, that is how, you know, well, if you set the goals and you reach it and you see, yeah. oh, yeah, we went way over, then it's, it's great for us. At which time of the year, Paulie, if, if you're a, as, a, as a club player, at which time of the year do you start getting your, your, your mind about registering to, to play rugby? How, how, when do you start going, okay, I want to play rugby. Do you, do you register in February? I mean, not from the administrative point of view, but you as a player, and I'm look, talking about more of a social player, someone who mm. wants to play club rugby, is not playing for Western Promise. When do you go, okay, I'm playing, I want to play rugby this year? Yeah, probably probably December, January. That soon? Yeah, definitely. I mean, to get it, to get into the clubs. I mean, nowadays, the club season's all, I mean, it's, it's all season. It's pretty, yeah. it's pretty much aligned with the, with, the, with the international seasons. Yeah, yeah. So the guys, the guys are playing all year. Mr. Age, I must say, I went out to uh, the UWC function on Friday night and uh, I was extremely impressed uh, with the organization of the... They've got bursaries there for some of their players, which I think is very exciting. But what they really seem to be doing is they're creating this vibe for players to, to join UWC. And it's not about playing for money. It's about playing for the team, for the love, for the university, playing for the community. Yeah, I think that is, you know, most of the clubs try to create that kind of yeah. uh, situation at their club. Because if you draw players only because of money, you don't draw spectators. Mm, mm, players mm. bring their families. If you buy players from outside of Western province to come and play for your club, where's their families? When are they going to watch you? Well, absolutely. And uh, the, other, the other club that excites me, really excites me this year, and... I mean, quite frankly, if I was a player, I would be very tempted to go and join Tigerberg this year, yeah. who have just come up from Super League B, who have got such a geest there. I'm not going to worry about money. You, you can't pay me enough to not be involved in rugby because you know, there's a geest there. I mean, you get there, there's, a, it's, there's a, such a vibe, and you really are playing for the people, and the people are coming to see you. I mean, and there's a couple of clubs like that, but... That surely is much more important than, than paying for yeah. paying to play. At Tigerberg, you, you know, and, and some other clubs, you become the property of the community. Yeah, they will tell you how good you are or how bad you are. You will hear within the first ten or fifteen minutes what you're doing on the field. But I mean, you 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 have to give credit. Really, have to give credit to the clubs that are able to maintain themselves and build and improve without paying their players. No, no, that's, no, that's, no, that's the best. Yeah. It was like that before professional rugby uh, came into being. Nobody mm. got paid. You might have received a you know, five rand year or coke year or mm. cool ring there, but nobody got paid. So now, Paulie, when you were a playing lot of people are paying them big money. Yeah, but, but, that, but, but I get the feeling that the, it's the, the people who pay are the people who don't do anything extra for the players, so they have to pay. When you were playing for UCT or uh, any uh, what other clubs did you play for? I don't know where you where all you played, but no, just just UCT. No, we, we we got paid on the dope system. Oh, 
Yes, um, yeah. Yeah, so when we won, there were cases of beer. <laughs> 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 when, we, when we lost, there was nothing. <laughs> Even the camera crew are laughing. Yeah, no. No, no, we're not allowed to mention the DOP system on no, Kid no, Bean TV. Yes. Um, but it, it seems to me that, the, that, the, that, that, that you've got a choice in terms of how to attract players to play for your club. Either you can make your club so exciting that you play for the want to be there, or if you haven't bothered to make your club exciting, you've got to find something else and then you have to buy them. For those of the people out there who don't know, that was the gist of Monday night's workshop. Oh, of course, yes, yes. We actually need to touch base on that. That now. we, that you must create an event. Every match yeah. must be an event. Yeah. It's not just a match that you come and play. Create an event that will attract the people to your field. So, folks, let me quickly fill you in on that, um, in, and in the sense that um, uh, we had the social media and sponsorship workshop on Monday night. There were 65 odd clubs there, um, and it was all about creating excitement, creating a vibe, um, building a Facebook page for your club, uh, having a Twitter handle for your club, uh, watching the scores and results from other clubs, and most importantly, putting all of that together so you can take it to a sponsor with a value-added attraction. And this time around, you're getting it with a stamp of approval from Western Province Rugby. And Western Province Rugby have structured, and are busy in the process actually, of structuring a benefits package that is worth a certain amount that you can take to sponsors. And Mr. H, that's what it's about. That's about turning your players into celebrities, putting your players on blogs and photographs, and that's what what makes them want to come back game after game. And once you have that, the you sponsors will also come and see why is there all this activity happening in my area? Why are the people rushing past my shop to go in by the gate at Florida Park? Mm -hmm. you know, let me go see you. Maybe I can get some something back from there. So those that were not there, well, a few of them that were not there, yeah. they once again lose out. Well, if you want part of, if you want those benefits, you're going to have to have a chat. It's interesting that the, the, some of the administrators of the of the organisations came under under a bit of flack there. But um, <laughs> quite frankly, I think the only person that should be paid at a club is the coach. Nobody else. Pay the coach and let him motivate, inspire, excite, and do the work. Look off. Anyway, that's my little theory. But I also think that a little bit of pocket money on a Saturday wouldn't do any harm for unemployed people. So you should probably have uh, people like us from Cape Town TV and um, <laughs> the Cape Rugby Show. Um, anyway, let's take a look at some of the other functions coming up <laughs> during the course of the year still. It is the National Sevens uh, Men and Women. That's uh, on the 4th and 5th of November in East London. We're going to take a look at that squad in a second. It's the AGM and the Executive Planning Conference and the HSBC Sevens World Series in Port Elizabeth. And my man Paul Dalpot will talk to me more about that. Let's quickly look now at that DHL Western Brothers Rugby 7 squad. Very exciting squad. Looks like the players come from all over the place. But uh, yes, Justin Lecoq, Benny Adams, Alcon Roy Buerta, uh, Stuart Calder, Eric Zana, Rowan Kutsoff, Sinitemba Mpakwa, yes, otherwise known as Snez, Shuaib Samaya, Philip Hopley, uh, Thurlow Peterson, Angelo Nelson, and Vivian Fredericks. Okay, so there's the team. And Mr. H, if I just look at some of those names there, some of those names really jump out at me. If I go through those names there, if I look, for example, um, uh, Sini Temba from El Cesarfield, Snaes, he really made the effort, he stood out of the club, he got the attention, and he's been called up into the seventh squad. And the club made sure that he was at the training of the sevens. What do you mean? Explain Be that. Mm, previously, you know, there was a whole outcry when, we, when I said here that they're hiding him from... Right. the spotlight and then they took him there yeah. and he's there it and shows that when we awarded him the day of the elsie's river hamlets he was actually our first man of the match recipient yes that's right he was the first one to win the so charter what it says is that we know our rugby <laughs> <laughs> absolutely if i just look at uh, uh, some other names that jump out for me there um philip hopley he was the man of the match and the captain at the nnk game paul he was yeah. in actual fact you picked him as Someone to watch out during the game. Egan, before the game, said. Okay, he's the man. Was Egan, all right. I was, I was trying to give you some I know credit. You're there. trying to, but I've got enough credit with Carlos here, don't <laughs> I? <laughs> Carlos, the moustache. No Let's quickly look at some of those players that are on standby in that seven squad. 
Ricardo Lewis is in the mix from Belhar. Idris Aronsa, Gafur Lacun, we know him very well. He's been around the block a bit. Dugold Williams, Damien de Allende, and uh, Elmo Thomas from uh, Balbal. So some pretty nice uh, players in the mix there. Quite a nice spread, Mr. H, uh, yeah, no, of, of players that have uh, come. True. The one thing about this Western Province seven side, we've never really made it. You know, we fall out in the semi-finals, quarter-finals. I don't know it's some kind of... Why do we fall Omen. out, Paulie? You're the sevens expert. Why do we fall out? No, I don't know, James. It's very, it's very, very difficult to put a sevens team together a, a week before a tournament. Mm. Yeah. I mean, what a lot of people don't understand, you know, you always think you watch us play, and you think, oh, sevens is easy. You come and you throw a ball around, you throw some backflip, backflick passes, and you step a couple of people. It's really not. It's a completely different game. Yeah. You learn a completely different way of playing. There's a different skill set. Yeah. And I think some guys, it takes certain guys longer than others to actually get Get, you know, get, get up to speed, and that's where, that's where you end up falling short. Any advice for the Sevens players? <coughs> yeah, I think if, if the guys get a structure to work to, which, which they will now. I mean, we're actually playing against the province boys tomorrow evening, uh, just for warm-up games. Who's we? You being the, the Springbok Springbok Sevens? sevens. Yeah, yes. we're playing against them tomorrow night. So just, just to say, as, as soon as, uh, you know, the, the faster everybody gets on the same page, the easier it will be for them to play as a team and actually. So when, you, when you when you when you when you when you use words like structure, what, what do you mean? You, you, are you talking about drills or moves or no, combinations? Well, moves and just 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 ways ways to play sevens, just to actually end up uh, using the space better, um, putting putting your certain players that you need to be in certain positions. You have your strike runners, you have your playmakers. Just having those guys in the right positions at the right time to make the right decisions. Hell of a complicated. Yeah. It, it Playmakers and strike runners. I mean, well, <laughs> sounds, so, I don't know, anyway. Sounds very complicated <laughs> to me. So if I think if you're a sevens coach, you need to know your stuff. I must say that, you know, the other unions, perhaps, I don't know, I think they just prepare better because Bulland, who's been the champions for a few years, they, they bring their entire, or they bring Karika players. Yeah. The same with the other provinces. We tend to just use, you know, the club players and so on. But it's a great opportunity for club yeah, players to come to. I mean, uh, if, if anything, yeah. that's the time for them to get a, 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 a shot in the, in the spotlight. But you, uh, you know, Western Province must now create the culture of winning competitions that they play in. Like the amateur teams, we have the culture of winning our competitions. The professional team must also have that culture. But at the same time, we also need to develop the culture of supporting the team win or lose. No, no, we always, we, sh we sh shout at them, See, but we, we, we support them, See, always there. You, you guys are the sh like the bosses, so you want mm -hmm. the trophies. We're the fans, we just support, That's win or good. lose. Keep on doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Paulie, if you, what do you prefer? A fan who only supports you because you win, or a fan who just backs you all the way? It's just, you know, obviously a, f a fan who just backs you all the way, all definitely. Right. Are they out there? Are there any out there? No, there <laughs> are. I'm going to say that Cape Town, it's tough. Eh? When problems don't do well, you, yeah. you cop it properly. But then again, on the, on the other side of the coin, when you play well, people love you. Yeah. So again, like Mr. H said, just make sure you win, then you make your life easy. It, it occurred to me earlier on, I mean, um, in, in the, just while we were in the World Cup, and when we started looking at this whole broadcasting scenario, it occurred to me that nobody had thought about why the fact that the Springboks had at some stages not always had as many supporters as they could have, nor the Stormers, because we know that for a fact that there are a lot of Crusader supporters in Cape, there's a lot of blue supporters, and there's a lot of all-black supporters. And then it's, I started to realize, well, maybe that it's kind of difficult to make a connection with the all-blacks, the Stormers, or Western Province, when you never get to see them on TV. So, of course, building that brand is a little bit more difficult. So. We've, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not there's any broadcasting or structural changes because if you want to build that relationship with the fans out there, you need to show them the players and show them the brand. Well, folks, hopefully we will uh, show you the brand Western Province Rugby Year on Cape Town TV as much as possible. Let's take a look at the women's Simmons team, not to be forgotten, my favorite team of all. Of course, the women's rugby team out there. Andrea Stubbs, Claudia Davids, Voyokazi Mbonda, Mariska Lewitz, she was on our show recently, Charmaine Kaiser, Mariska Crane, Sasha Tenka, Alma Kemp, Natasha Hofmeister is the captain, Janine Felix, Amy Barrett, and Zimkita Ntsilana. Now, that is your women's team. Uh, Paulie, how much of a difference between uh, men's sevens and women's sevens? 
No, not too much. Just men and women. Just men and women. Same ball on the field. Less Carlos. Women have the same skills. Well, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully less. Le the fewer moustaches. Yeah. <laughs> fewer moustaches, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's time for us to take an ad break, folks. Uh, we're going to, of course, when we come back, uh, uh, wrap up with some of our sponsors. And we're also going to touch base with some of the Stormers rugby players who recently went out to go and check out uh, one of the yachts in the uh, waterfront where it's the launch of the Volvo um, yacht race, uh, of course, out there because DHL is one of the sponsors of uh, the uh, main yacht that the Stormers went to sail on. How many of them got seasick? I don't know. We'll be back with you guys in a minute. Just looking at the Facebook page now, a couple of interesting comments there. Um, Jerome Falkvane says, yes, uh, Conrad Junches. Uh, Dudley Jacobs says, Conrad Junches. And Gershon Trussell says, that guy looks like uh, Tim Howard, the keeper from Everton Rugby Football <laughs> Club. <laughs> Speaking about football, now I did say, actually, over the weekend, that I was going to talk about tennis, that I was going to turn the show into a tennis show because um, it was important that we speak about, you know, game, set, match. Well, you'll have scores like 6-love, six 6-3, six six you know, ten, in the world of tennis. But, of course, this week it was, not, it was tennis in the world of soccer. And I thought it very important because we know that there's so many Manchester United fans out there who I know became Manchester United fans after they saw the sticker on the back of a taxi. Mm. Um, Paulie, are you a man fan? Not. You're not a man all. fan. It was a fantastic weekend for me. <laughs> I'll never, <laughs> ever, ever, ever forget this weekend. Uh, Mr. H, are you a man fan? No. There's no man fans? Right, so... For the Manchester United fans out there, can you please, anybody, on Facebook right now, just explain to me, I missed the match, um, but I heard it was 3-1, and then 10 minutes before it was still 3-1, and then Manchester S City managed to turn it into a tennis score, and that Manchester United lost 6-1. Um, Nigel Pierce, if you're out there, I know that you're probably like the president of the Manchester United Supporters Club. We, we honestly need to get you on the show if you can explain to us. What has happened to Manchester United? Is this the end of Manchester United? Are they closing down? Are they firing their players? Is it time for the coach to go? Because heavens knows, when it's 6-1, the coach has failed. You have to fire the coach. In actual fact, I believe he came out in a press conference after that, um, after that loss, Alex Ferguson, and said that he is quitting and it is the end of the road for him much like Peter de Villiers came out after the World Cup and said he is quitting, it is the end of the road for him. Or will you believe everything you hear in the media? My condolences to the Manchester United fans. If you're out there, I know you're still struggling and the pain is sitting deep with you. Um, but yes? <laughs> there is a helpline. There is a helpline? Oh, it's 616161. <laughs> 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 www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. If you're not a Manchester United supporter fan, <laughs> jump on and support Cape Rugby. And if you're a Manchester United fan, best of luck for the next match. Um, it was always going to happen. Uh, but yes, um, uh, you know, honestly, I've, I've been waiting about 20 years to tell people <laughs> this. <laughs> I had to live with this on Good Hope FM uh, with Nigel Pierce every day. Glory, glory. Glory, man. glory, man. And now it's glory, man. He's six nucks. <laughs> Anyway, at least you guys got the one point there. You managed to score the one goal. So it's not all doom and gloom for the Manchester United fans. You managed to score one goal, which is a positive. This means you can build. Next time you can look at scoring 6-2. And so you go 6-3, 6-4, until you eventually are up there with the other teams that are at a higher level. Okay. Um, <laughs> Mr. H, now that I've managed to rub the noses of man <laughs> fans, and I know there's probably going to be all waiting in the parking lot for me, um, it was the, uh, the, 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 the schools rugby AGM today? Yeah, the high schools had their annual general meeting. There were a lot of new nominations, but, you know, in rugby it's very difficult to change the, the guard. And all the members got in from Danny Jones, the chairman, right down, and there was actually one vacancy, and Armin Brink. Who's Armin Brink from Voice of the Cap? Yeah, he, he's now a newly elected a, a, a member on the executive what uh, an excellent so choice i think he's a true gentleman and um um uh yeah i mean if you're out there and you're listening 
very uh, best of luck and uh, couldn't have chosen a better man for the job. We're looking forward to uh, seeing uh, the difference that you're going to make in the youth rugby. Remember, Cape Town TV is 100% behind you guys there. Let's quickly look at some of those other upcoming events. Um, of course, it is the annual general meeting of Western Province uh, Rugby's Football Union, the Executive Planning Conference. Uh, in actual fact, we can just uh, stay on that then, and it's the HBC 7s. Um, Mr. H, the um, annual general meeting for the, uh, for, for the union, what do you guys do there? Uh, so just the annual report. There's no elections this year because we only have elections every second year. Right. So this year there's no elections. So. Okay, and then you've got an executive planning conference in December? Yes. Uh, you know, we, we plan uh, most of the things. That you plan your holiday? No, 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 no. <laughs> we are already on holiday that time. The offices are closed, but we will have to work. Well, I'll have to work. Yes, I'm sure you'll have um, to work, yeah. But, yeah, it's just, you know, most of the things have been planned already. All right. the, the meetings and all the things have been set down. Yeah. Uh, the fixtures, the only thing that we're waiting now is the Curry Cup fixtures. When you start with m doing club fixtures? The club fixtures we're busy with now. Already? Yeah. For 2012? Yeah, we've got all the things laid out. Now we are, uh, tomorrow or so, we'll ask the clubs to send us all the special dates. Right. You know that the universities wants to be off, clubs want to be off during the fast of Ramadan. Others have anniversaries and celebrations. And they can't play. You got to take all this into account. We take all that into account. We put it into sit down and we check it all out, and then. So d you take into account university holidays. You take into account um, the month of Ramadan. Yeah. You take into account Jewish holidays. Everything. All of those kind of holidays. All the clubs have the opportunity to ask now if they can't play on a specific Saturday. Okay. Okay. So, so of course, we put yeah. it in, you know. One of the other big events coming up then uh, in, uh, the in, the, in the month of December is the HSBC Sevens World Series. Paulie, tell us about that. Very exciting. Very exciting. The, it's, it's now moved from George to Port Elizabeth, yeah. uh, the Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium, which is a fantastic venue. Yeah. Uh, we, we're all very excited, and I mean, I've, I've never been to PE in December, but apparently it's, a, it's, a, it's an absolute party. People yeah, will, no, you come, come back with a moustache and, and a mohawk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a mullet. <laughs> a mullet. No, it's, there's, there's no mullet. How many teams at the HSBC World Champs? 16. 16? 16, 16 in, in each tournament, and in, in Hong Kong there are 24, because Hong Kong is a flagship tournament. You're expecting so this to be tough? Yeah, it, it always is. Um, the, the, the guys are going to come hard. I'm sure all the, all the teams are working hard at the moment. Um, so, but we're, gonna, we're definitely going to make a big push to, uh, to, to win it. No, you, you, you always want to win your home tournament. Yeah, yeah. You're feeling the vibe already? I mean, it's only a month away. Yeah, it's only a, a, only a month away, and you know how it goes uh, with, the, with the sevens. You blink your eyes and you go, we're leaving on the 18th of November for the first tournament. Right. Um, and it's, it's, it's going to be three in a row. So it's going to be taxing on the bodies, but uh, it's, it's going to be fantastic to play, to play the third leg at home. But you've been working hard now for a while. You're all prepped and ready to go, eh? Yeah, no, we yeah. are. It's a pretty... They lost the ARB Sevens World Player. The ARB Sevens so World Player? Yeah, Cecil I didn't Africa. tell you, you guys hear about Cecil Africa. Cecil, yes. ARB Sevens Player of the Year. First South African in history to be named Sevens Player of the Year. Amazing. So he goes into the Hall of Fame with Wasali Sarevi and yes. Wali Maya and all those guys. All those but guys Cecil, you played against, eh? Yeah, so Cecil will be fine. He'll be back for Dubai and for a little bit. Okay. He'll just miss the first one. So he just missed the first one yeah. back in the mix, huh? Back in the mix. How is, you, is he? How do you break? Your cheekbone, in, you know. He got a, he got a, he got a knee in his face. But that's the second time. Now. No, he broke his jaw the last time. Oh, mm. yeah. Because he tackles like uh, a fragile face. Oh, he tackles fa <laughs> a front end. Yeah. <laughs> time for us to take a look at our Evox product competition, folks. This is what you need off season, and this is what the guys are using now already to start bulking up. This is where you have your time to get into the gym. You've got three or four months to prep. The Stormers have got even less time. The Sevens guys have been doing it for the last few months, getting ready. You need to get into the gym right now. You've had a week's uh, rest. Jody Birch was here with us two weeks ago. He said he's going to take one week's rest, and then he just hits the gym hard. During that time, you need to be eating two or three protein shakes per day. Evox is going to help you get there, not to mention the fact that you need to eat everything else. Folks, in case you get any other advice out there, the simple rule of thumb is eat like a horse. Train like an animal and eat like a horse. Put on the muscle while you can. We did draw a winner from uh, the Evox competition, and all you needed to do was uh, SMS 
uh, tell us who, who the Evox uh, is, who's the official supplier to uh, the Stormers. And this week's winner of the Evox 5 kilogram Mega Grow is Rodney Hart. Congratulations, Rodney. You win yourself a bucket of Mega Grow. Right, there we go, folks. So, of course, available at Discam, MCAM, Clicks, Pick and Pay, and uh, other leading uh, pharmacies. 5XL Mega Grow, that's what you need to get. Um, put yourself in the mix. Uh, two of these shakes a day, two to three shakes like this. Tops up the protein stores, packs on the muscle. And you want to know how to get in, uh, in touch with the guys? Very easy, right? Just drop them an SMS to uh, 32010 with the word EVOX and follow with your name, and I'm sure they'll get in contact with you right smartly. Also, it's on the uh, Club Rugby website, www.pclubrugby.co.za. And um, under the sponsor section, you can go apply for your Club Rugby special dispensation as an official supplier. So a bucket like that will probably last you about six weeks, okay? Cost of food so high, quite frankly, I don't, would suggest it's not a bad idea. There are 30 clubs being tested right now yeah. at the uh, Sports Science Center. Those guys know that they need that product. So they better wake up there and not come back when they must be retested and then they're worse off than when they yeah. started. Well, it was interesting to look at the World Cup. And every time that they showed photo, the, those scenes, those camera scenes, you know, in the locker room scenes, the tables were laid out with the supplements and you go to the stormers changing and laid out with the supplements because they know protein is what gets the recovery they've got the energy drinks that puts them back on the field and whatever any dietitian of course any dietitian is going to say it's not necessary you can put on muscle by eating bread uh, absolute rubbish it's time for us to uh, take a look at what the stormers got up to uh, just uh, last week they went to check out the volvo action uh, action ocean race at the waterfront we caught up with the mayor as well as, as some of the stormers. Let's see what the boys had to do. The people of the city and the world will have the benefit of raised villages, getting behind the scenes looks at the world of professional sport. Cape Town is associated with excellence and the team of the Volvo team here and we've got of course our Stormers here, it's all associated with excellence and Cape Town will put up a good show. Yeah, Cape Town is the second leg of the Volvo Around the World Ocean Race and uh, I think the boats arrive here on November the 7th and today is the first part of our activation of the branding of that event. So we launched the J133 that you see behind us. Um, and that race is uh, in races around Cape Town, but also will be used for customer events, employee events, and of course to help some disadvantaged children we'll take out and give them a real first class experience out in the water. Yeah, I think it's good fun. I think um, all the people, all the boats pulling in, um, I think it's going to be a good vibe. It's, also, it's always a good vibe in Cape Town. I think it's, it's, it's just going to be better now. No, definitely. Yeah. Tourism, all, all that kind of stuff, and just the, just the people people in Cape Town. They are uh, quite big on uh, on boats and and the outdoors. So uh, it's it's quite nice to to, to see folks uh, out here and, and, and enjoying themselves. I don't know much about sailing myself, but uh, just hearing the mayor um, um, speak now, I mean, obviously it's it's a massive thing for Cape Town, um, and it will also I think it will bring a lot of people together. And I mean, they spoke about the youth as well, so um, massive importance and uh, really looking forward to it. Nice to see the Stormers getting out there, and quite often we don't see those guys, folks. We're going to do, uh, in a minute or so, take a look at our color tone paints competition, so get yourself ready for that. And then we'll have a chat at the end of the show about the Rugby World Cup. But before we uh, wrap all that up, Mr. H, uh, just a reminder then for the folks, on the 29th of November, it's the Kiddies Party. At the HPC. And, uh, Which is the high performance center where the Stormers train. Yeah, at Belleville. At Belleville. We would like people to start bringing, you know, toys and whatever they can. We've yeah. got quite a lot Is of... Is it open to the public? 
Not really, but they can come and have a look at what, what is happening there on the day. Okay. The space is a bit limited around there. Right. Because we put up a lot of uh, play centers for the kids, you know. Yes. And uh, we're not there long because those kids, a lot of them can't stay out longer than an hour, then they get tired. Yes. So of course, a lot, lot of orphanages and yeah, disadvantaged yeah. kids? And you know, disabled kids. Yes, this, okay. Uh, so we, we, we bring them there and we, we just make them aware of um, the joy is in getting the, you know, their presents and their gifts. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, folks, on that note, we will be having another, uh, possibly before the 29th of November, still, we'll be having one more uh, before we break for the uh, social media seminar. And that will be a great opportunity for you as the PR or the committee administrator. If you're a president of a club worth your salt, you will be asking your community to donate some toys and give it to one of those PR or social media people and just bring it to us at that seminar. Is that a great yeah, idea? That's great. That's a good idea. Otherwise, on the day, on the 29th, HPC, chance for the kids out there, the disadvantaged kids, the poor kids, the orphaned kids, disabled kids, who have never seen the storm as Western Province rugby players in action, or even been to a facility like the HPC, it's an opportunity there for you to bring toys to the field. So make sure that you uh, do that. Let's take a quick look at color tone paints that have supported us uh, so keenly during the course of the year. Color tone paints is your white line fever sports field marker of a choice. We put it out every week and we ask you to uh, SMS the word Color Tone to 32010 if you want to win yourself a hamper courtesy of Color Tone. Last week's winner, Esther Afir. Congratulations, you win yourself a Color Tone hamper. The boys will be in touch. Color Tone paints the white line sports field marker of choice. Uh, folks, of course, it's been World Cup time. We might as well have a quick chat about that. Paulie, All Blacks against France, well, what do you think? Oh, was surprising. Um, personally, I thought the All Blacks were going to give them a hiding. So yeah. it was fantastic to see France come out the way they did. And I think just for the spectators, it's, 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 it's never nice to see a one-sided final. Um, so it was, it was a special game of rugby. But at the end of the day, I, I would have been very upset if France won. Um, I think New Zealand would have been, volcanoes would have erupted, <laughs> tidal waves would have come in, <laughs> people would have been jumping off the Auckland Bridge. So it was fantastic that, that the All Blacks won. And not doing the bungee jump. Mr. H, you and I had a feeling France might come through yes, from the beginning, yes, eh? Right. We are, I mean, I was, you know, I was hoping that the French would upset everybody. Yeah. Because then it would have uh, justified my belief in them. Yeah. And, uh, but then, you know, things happen. Uh, I still think I, I couldn't believe when I heard that the French were fined because of uh, they came too close. What what does that rule got to do with rugby? Yeah, I'm sorry if you want to do the haka and you want to square off, well, you must face up to whoever's going to face up to you. What if they had turned around and looked the other way or walked away and stood on the other side? Absolutely, absolutely. Then they would also be in trouble. We we can't. I hope you can't protect New Zealand. No, no, no. I, I think you must keep your traditions and cultures can go only so far mm. right. before you start basically being a disruption to the rest of the community. No, but it was a great game. And uh, in the end, uh, I think, as Paul said, you know, it was great for the spectators. Yeah. It was close, tense, till right to the very last minute. I still think that the referee should have penalized the All Blacks at least five or six times in the last 20 minutes. Well, yeah. But he didn't do it. He yeah. said he didn't want to do it. Well, it was a, it was a game of rugby, and he, he he had to keep running. Yeah. Let's quickly take a look at that picture photographs. You uh, pick folks. Uh, you wanted to know who it was. It was Conrad Jantius. Connie Jantius. That was the hidden picture then. And I know quite a few folks on um, Facebook managed to uh, throw it out there. Um, Mariam M. Jajakou says, Manchester United is the kid in the class that fools around, fails tests, but usually finishes top of the class. <laughs> Thanks, Mariam, for that. Um, we're looking forward to seeing all the uh, web-savvy people at the next social media seminars, folks. Make sure that you stay in the mix there. It's as easy as asking your administrators and following the newsletters and going to the Club Rugby website. Get in the mix, all right? We're talking social media. We're talking about sports sponsorship. It's very, very exciting. Paul Dalport. Thank you very much, my man. We'll catch up with you again soon. Good to see you again. And Mr. H, it's not over for you yet. You've still got a lot of work to do at the union. Yeah, well, we'll just carry on.
<laughs> just carry on. Just carry on. Looking forward to those fixtures. Right, folks, that is a wrap from uh, Cape Rugby TV. We'll catch you again next week at 9 o'clock, uh, same time, same place. And uh, if you're uh, looking for information, go and join us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. To me and the rest of the crew here at Cape Town TV, have a fantastic evening. See you on the weekend. See you next week. Bye-bye.